Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at our Coldwater Michigan Superstore. Welcome back once again. A bit of a brisk day. We've got a fun trailer here for you. What I like about this one, this is the 24JS uh, Cherokee Grey Wolf, but we're seeing it today in the upgraded Black Label series, and this is really rare. It's one of the only no slide Cherokees that can be outfitted in the Black Label package. Um, the, and, and what's cool about that is it gives you like a lot of those nice, fun, upscale looks and feels but in a no slide simplistic kind of feeling camper. So you can kind of have something that's flashy, have something that's a little fancy, but not everybody wants slide outs. There's a lot of people out there, I call them slide skeptics, and I don't mean that in a negative way. There's a lot of people say, look, I want a trailer that just doesn't have mechanical things that can go wrong. I wanna have less to care for, less to maintain. That's where this one comes in right here. Now this floor plan is really nice for a solo or couples camping arrangement. Um, it, it operates basically as a no bunk version of something like a 26 DJSE Grey Wolf. So if you like this living room, if you like this bedroom, but you're like, I need more sleeping than that, they make that too. Um, and it's really funny because this is a classic floor plan. One of our service people was like, I had that floor plan in a Fleetwood Terry. Yeah, it's a really good layout that just keeps rocking and rolling. Um, so, you know, Cherokee also makes that gray wolf. It just has a giant rear dinette. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll leave you a link in the video description. But if you like something like that, but you want it in that black label fancy package, this is your get out of jail free card right here. But what I like is it's not just an alternative floor plan. It functions differently with that big rear bathroom and kind of open living area. It looks and feels nice and large inside, but also has a little mini camp kitchenette on here that doesn't feel like it takes away from the living room space whatsoever. It just enhances the out, uh, outside experience on this one. It is a great little floor plan and I would love it if you left me some notes letting me know what do you think about it? What's your favorite part? What would you change given the opportunity? And if you haven't done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button to catch us on the next one. In the meantime, let's get inside here. And, and people who've been camping for a long time, you're going to recognize this floor plan almost immediately. Like I said, this is not a new layout. This is just a really well executed layout. It, and it's interesting to me, there's actually a lot of manufacturers who have stopped building layouts like this over the years, but Cherokee's version continues to be extremely popular. Um, it's just kind of funny how that works out sometimes. Now, um, it uh, one of the things to consider here, obviously, it does not have a privacy wall for the front bed. But remember, this is not a bunkhouse, even though they do that in their bunkhouse model also. The idea behind this one is it's one or two people. So what it's doing is it's making the whole RV look and feel big. Now, if you do happen to have a guest on a trip, they do include at least the privacy curtain right there so you can kind of sectionalize things off. But for the most part, most people... I think anyway, are not going to need that privacy area there. And it just makes the RV look and feel more open and spacious as a result during the day. Now, opinions on that can vary. So if you're like, no, dude, I really, really, really want one of the privacy. Well, no sweat. You give us a call. Uh, we will track down different opportunities, different floor plans through our system, and we will get something figured out for you. Now, here in a full Grey Wolf series, you've got like a full bedroom complement, like the, uh, the full cabinet overhead. You've got the two hanging closets on either side. But notice how you have household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed as well. That's something Cherokee's very good about. Basically, anywhere that you could sit or sleep, they got places where you can juice stuff up, which as a tech-addicted nerd, I find very, very useful. Over here, we have a uh, Camp Queen bed. That is going to be problematic for some people, and that is why I wanted to get up in this bedroom first and foremost. Let's get those... Uh, like make or break things. Let's get them out of the way so we can make sure we're spending your time effectively watching these videos. And if that's an issue, let me know and I'll see if I can help you find something else that might work uh, a little bit better. To get a true queen bed, we would probably have to start looking at something at a little bit higher price point. That's a little bit longer. It's going to weigh a little bit more, but those features are most certainly available. Now, this floor plan is nice too because it's easy cleaning. It's a carpetless flooring system, but you might notice there's a couple little carpeted uh, bumps over here. Those are your wheel wells. So unfortunately, that just kind of is what it is. They're not really intended to be a walkable space. And when I look at this, is it just me? I mean, you're this is begging to put something like a shoe rack right here, right? Like, it feels like there needs to be a thing right there. Ooh, you know what else would work really well? Right on top of that uh, carpeted uh, uh, wheel well, a trash can right by the entry door. I'm telling you, 
As someone who actively camps myself, that is an extremely handy thing. <coughs> Pardon me. Apparently, the extremely was a little too extreme. And <coughs> I just did it again. I choked myself. <coughs> I got to quit doing that. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. I'm dying over here. Somebody send help. Uh, up top. This is a six and a half foot ceiling, by the way. The skylight there has that little shade you can draw if you don't want the sun baking you. But did you notice how this is centralized air conditioning? That's an important thing to mention in a no-slide camper like this. A lot of no-slide campers don't have centralized air. So especially that privatized rear bathroom does not usually get good airflow. You don't have that problem with this one. Now, uh, right now, basically, this is what it looks like when you're sitting on the sofa. So you have a really good look at where the TV could be if you choose to add one. And as we work our way down here, a couple things to showcase for you. Um, you can see how that can fold down into a sleeper. But one of the things that I noticed, guys, the dinette bench closest to the entry door actually had, uh, you know, its, its seat decking was completely screwed down. And I started looking at it and I couldn't figure out why. So uh, <laughs> I unscrewed it. And you know what I found? is what you saw. It was just pure storage. I actually don't know why they screwed that down right there. Uh, maybe somebody can and can provide me with some insights on that in the comment section. But the fact is, that is pure storage space. So let's say you're an existing owner of one of these or you're looking to shop for one. Keep that in mind. You can unscrew the decking below uh, that one uh, dinette base side there and get more storage out of it. Hope that little tip helps you. Hope that provides some benefit. Notice too, man, in the kitchen, you're going to be able to see what you're chopping here. Uh, that, I mean, there's there's some serious light action going on. That is one of those 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridges. The handy little uh, wooden backsplash cutting board serving table whack attacker you can use to defend yourself from the gas station murder hobos included on all of our Cherokee stuff now. Uh, first seen in the Wolfpack series, but has been quickly adopted by the rest of the family, thankfully. And in Black Label Edition, we upgrade to solid surface kitchen countertops, which is kind of nice. That's another neat thing about the Black Label series. It used to be almost exclusively outside-y stuff but they have really kind of uh, enhanced it so that every room in the RV gets another nice little touch. And it occurs to me, I don't know if I've given you a good look at just the dinette in actual dinette mode. Now, when that's a sleeper, when the sofa's a sleeper because they both fold down, admittedly, they're not big. So it's a good camper for one or two people. If you've got a smaller kid and an occasional grandkid guest or like a big dog, that floor plan's gonna work, or this floor plan will work great for you. By the way, down here, you see that handy battery disconnect switch, but also the converter, although it needs cleaned off, and we do that stuff for you without charging you, know, which is nice. But the um, converter on these is lithium friendly. There's a little switch you can flip inside. So if you do want to get uh, Battleborns or Renogies or whatever, you want to go lithium batteries on these, this camper is lithium friendly. Not all of the converters are. And in case you're wondering, like, what does that even mean, lithium friendly? Because I'm still learning about this stuff. And I, um, long story short, like take Rockwood, for instance. Let's ignore this Cherokee for a second. Rockwood has a factory standard solar package. They have a 190 watt panel on the roof. Uh, they have, you know, uh, inverter, converter, all that stuff. Their converter will take a lithium battery up to 80%. So it's not that it doesn't charge lithium batteries. It just doesn't provide up to a 100% complete charge. That doesn't hurt the battery or anything like that. But the solar package that's on the camper can take it up to the other 100%. In this Cherokee, you don't have to worry about that. If you're plugged in for a long time and you're going to take a little weekend out, and this has a basic solar package, we'll talk more about that outside, it will provide 100% charge to that battery, provided you uh, open the little cover on the converter box there and flip it from lead-acid AGM mode to lithium mode. It is really nice that Cherokee does do that, especially if you want to expand a solar package, if you want to take this stuff off and, like, build your own. It's nice that you don't also have to dig into the converter to do that. Now, finally moving into our bathroom here. Actually, hold on. I'm going to back up in just a second. I'm trying to figure out how to do this on the fly. Apologies. So, uh, whether it's standard series or black label, you get the four speed high exhaust vent fan here, which is really sweet. But people might ask, why doesn't that door go all the way up to the ceiling? Well, first of all, on this floor plan, it would interfere with the air conditioner. But the other thing is, if you want to leave that door shut all the time and you want to leave your like a, a bedside window open or something like that, 
all of that hot air that we create by existing and breathing, which was like basically the whole premise of the Matrix, if you remember that. Maybe we live in a simulation. I don't know. Anyway, um, it creates a hot air thermal blanket on the roof of the camper, the ceiling. Well, that vent fan can suck all that hot air out while maintaining a closed bathroom door for privacy's sake, which is kind of nice. Now, back here, um, by the way, if you're like, Oh man, a plastic toilet, you know, if that, if, if that's a thing for you, it doesn't bother me personally, but if you're like, no, I really want a porcelain bowl stool, that kind of stuff can be exchanged. Call our team, ask for quotes, we can do stuff like that. Now, speaking of the toilet here, because it's a shower curtain and not uh, a hard glass shower door, it leaves you plenty of elbow room right there, even if you're a bigger fella, a bigger lady, or uh, for those of us like me who identify as hot pockets, uh, it does the job just fine. Now, remember, this is a six and a half foot tall ceiling. So if you are my height, six, three or uh, so, you're going to have your head in the bubble. You're probably going to have to be under six foot to not have your head in the bubble whatsoever. But the skylight is there. I don't have to duck in this shower because they place the skylight intelligently. It works. It works very well. And then over here, <clears throat> the uh, Black Label series goes like full on luxury fifth wheel edition with their shower hardware, including... A little separate sprayer so you can, you know, really get it right on your back or wherever you like it. Um, it's uh, It feels almost a little bit over the top, but at the same time, it also, I think, looks pretty cool. I think it's a neat little feature there, but um, I'm open to feedback on that. Like, what do folks think about that? Now, uh, swinging back over just to hit the toilet again to give you a reference point. Did you notice on the way down, we actually saw, like, a normal light switch for the lights here in the battery? That's something uh, Cherokee had not always done in the past, so that's a recent enhancement. Um, a, a nice, dedicated, really good-sized medicine cabinet, but you notice how there's kind of a, a wall behind it. Above the camp kitchen, this is just pure storage. And my grandparents had the Jayco version of this trailer. It was actually the very last camper they had, which was kind of sad for me, because actually I started working here when my grandparents hit an age where they had to kind of give up on camping, you know? And I was the person who had to take pictures and advertise their trailer for sale after having memories of staying in that trailer. That was a really kind of tricky, bittersweet experience for me. But I will never forget, my grandmother always kept in that cabinet right over there in her Jayco, three cans of Campbell's home-style chicken noodle soup because that is what I loved. And she always wanted to make sure her precious Joshua had his favorite soup whenever we went camping. And my grandmother is the sweetest woman I have ever met. And I've got a lot of good Campbell soup memories with her. You guys have any good memories camping with your family growing up? Leave me a comment, let's, let's share a little bit. All right, so first thing here, let's talk towing. Uh, 4,810 pounds in black label edition and probably three or 400 pounds lighter in the standard series kind of throws some people off that black label edition is actually heavier. When you see fiberglass, you often associate that with lighter weight. I'll get to that in just a second. And considering, you know, no slides and easy uh, kind of length, this is an awesome model right here. Not just potentially for like half ton towing, but frankly, even if you've got like a, a larger class tow package SUV, uh, you will find this one uh, potentially very nicely within your comfortable and not just safe capacities because that's the thing. Um, you can give me the specs on a vehicle and I can tell you whether it's safe or not according to what the government regulates anyway. What I can't tell you is if you're going to find it comfortable. This will be, I think, a very comfortable experience for a lot of half-ton Oregon big SUV towing like an excursion or something like that. Um, so why is it heavier in black label? Fiberglass is supposed to mean ultralight, right? That's the thing, this is still a stick-built camper. When you go black label edition, you're not actually laminating the RV, which is the process that'll end up saving you weight. So you're getting the good look of a laminated RV. It slip streams down the road more easily with a smooth skin versus a corrugated skin because there's less surface area, which is a massive factor. But, um, it, uh, it, and it cleans easier than like, think of all those little grooves and nooks and crannies on that, uh, that wavy skin trailer over there. It's a little bit more of a process to clean than one of these but it still has a wood skeleton, then you're adding material on top of that, which is why Black Label adds some weight. Now, Black Label also adds some fun goodies, too. It's not just the skin. Like that power tongue jack on the front is a Black Label item. Something that's not Black Label, though, specifically, but I like to pair them together, are the power corner stabilizer jacks. 
Um, you can get those on a standard series camper. I'm sure some dealers actually go ahead and stock and order them that way. I like to order the standard series a little more basic so that you can have that uh, lighter weight and aggressive price point. And then I like to order the black labels kind of with a little bit more of all the trimmings and the goodies. But either way, I do make sure that these have a spare tire, which amazingly is out. Wait a minute. I already looked in this past year. What am I doing? Sorry. I'm all off kilter today. Um, anyway, Black Label also swaps us up to the nice magnet holdbacks on the baggage door. So that's just a simple, easy one hand operation. And of course, just the, the total curb appeal of this thing between the fiberglass skin and the, uh, the frameless tinted windows, it just looks phenomenal. Now this one, uh, I give them credit. They did a pretty good job on the awning. Um, somebody might say, yeah, I kind of wish the awning extended further to kind of encompass that rear camp kitchen. I can respect that, but I do think there's still a decent awning space here and with no slides or anything on the door side, it's totally unobstructed. It's like very picnic table patio chair kind of friendly, you know, um, on either side of this big picture window, which you're probably going to get a, a good reflection of me wearing my little ear cover and Snoopy hat right now. Um, <laughs> although with, <laughs> with, <laughs> With my face right down the seam of that window, it looks like a funny little funhouse mirror, doesn't it? Do, 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 do. Then again, I think that's probably pretty on brand for what you expect out of our videos nowadays. But outside TV hookups is what I was going to show you here. And then again, they added this a couple years ago, I think two or three seasons ago, they started outfitting this floor plan with that little mini camp kitchenette right there, which I personally really like. Now at the same time, if somebody goes, yeah, I don't really like that. Here's the thing. This in the bottom is just a drawer. That could just pull out of there, no big deal. And then all you do is you just remove the fridge and the ice maker as you please. Maybe you wanna leave them there, maybe you don't. And now it's just storage. You could always uh, basically just shut off and not use the, uh, it's basically an outside shower. It's kind of sort of supposed to act like a bit of an outside sink, or you can use it to uh, fill the ice maker. And I tell you what, those contour ice makers, as long as you got juice and you got water, baby, you got ice. They do not screw around. Those things crank out the ice. They are fantastic. I think they, uh, uh, they're they uh, sponsored by that, uh, you know, Elsa from Frozen, man. She just she just cranks out the ice. That, you know what? That sounded better in my head. That, sound, that, that was maybe the dumbest thing I've said in about the last three months once it came out of my mouth. But who cares? We're doing it live. Up top here, just below the walkable roof. You do have the LCI Insight rear view camera. That's a Bluetooth camera and the tech on that recently updated on the app. It refreshes far, far faster and does a much, much better job of giving you better looks now. And the third tail light down here, one of the reasons I like that is like right here, if like pretend you're the car behind this camper, those tail lights are already somewhat obstructed by that cargo rack on the back but not the third tail light. And then imagine that somebody actually puts cargo on the cargo rack. And I know that's a stretch guys, but hang with me here. Try to imagine that if you can. <laughs> um, you know, my point is you could block those tail lights. So it's nice they give you that extra safety feature right there. Now, what is also cool on these gray wolves um, is the, uh, you, you get a black tank flush and a full hot, cold outside shower. So in a very real sense, even though it's kind of acting like a sink on the other side of the trailer, this RV has like two outside showers. Now I like to give you good and fair information and sometimes uh, a bitter pill to swallow so that you know for a fact whether you're finding the right RV or not. There ain't, there ain't no two ways about it. That sewer pipe hangs fairly low to the ground and that's gonna be a problem for some people all the way in the back of the RV here. Like if you pull up a steep driveway, you're gonna have to re kind of think about that. Now you see that little pyramid shaped extrusion right there. If you draw a straight line from the bottom of that to the bottom of the tire, that's called the scrub line and engineers look at that and they say, okay, well, uh, everything has to be above that line. So theoretically that sewer line is not going to hit the ground, but we all know that, you know, theoretical uh, scientific uh, ideas versus practical real world application do not always yield the same result. So that is a factor like that, uh, the, the camp queen bed that we pointed out. Those are those fair factors I want to give you folks so that you make sure you're getting the right camper. Because the last thing we want is you spend all this money, you take it home and you rip the sewer pipe off and you call us and go, now what? Because at that point, you know, you own it. And 
We, we don't want that. We want you to make sure you got the right one. Now, interestingly, whether uh, e even here in the Black Label series, you still have an extra thick aluminum nose sweep, which is painted. So other than a little bit of decal stuff, there's not a whole lot on this RV that can really show a lot of weathering. And then you see that little juice pack solar panel on top there. Keep in mind, that is not the kind of solar that's like gonna run your air conditioner and allow you to boondock in the middle of the woods indefinitely. It is a nice battery tender so that when the RV has been in storage for a while, it, when you go to hit that power tongue jack or open that awning, it's going to do the thing it's supposed to do. It's going to have the juice to do that. But it is not the kind of thing, uh, you know, where <laughs> you, you get the idea. It's not the be all end all of solar, but it doesn't take much to actually get some really nice benefits. And it can actually extend the lifespan of your battery a little bit. A lot of people don't think about that. And I'll try to keep this as brief as I can. Uh, I tend to talk a lot, I'm aware. But um, common RV batteries, 12 volt batteries, like lead acid batteries, you really don't want to drain them below 50% of the battery's capacity. Because at that point, you actually start damaging the battery and it never fully recovers up to 100%. And you do that enough times where, you know, maybe the battery gets down to the point it only has a 60% capacity. Well, if you start getting below that 50% mark, which doesn't take much anymore because you've only got 10% functional battery, it's toast. My point here is that battery tending package will keep this battery in that topped off range for longer. So instead of only getting a year or two or three out of your camper's battery, you should be able to say double that or better and not have to constantly spend money replacing batteries. So even though it's a basic solar package, even if you're exclusively a park camper, like me, I tend to park camp. When I do go camping, I do enjoy just the convenience factors of having all the full hookups and, and on-site sewer and stuff. But this would benefit me because it would keep my RV's battery alive longer. So any solar is always better than no solar. So once again, thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to join us here. Uh, the feedback, again, please let me know what you like about it. Let me know what you would change. And if there's anything we can do better or different here for you, remember our channel is viewer driven and your feedback greatly shapes what we do here. So if there's uh, something I've missed, let me know. Any questions, uh, leave me a comment. I'll do my best to answer those. And remember, you can always check for pricing and availability via that link in the video description. So short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. I've got red ears. Get my Snoopy hat back on. Woo. Get my Snoopy hat on. Surprise. I'm recording, aren't I? And in case you're wondering, yeah, I really do talk to myself like that all the time. It really do be like that. <laughs>